Today's screencast lecture is supplemental to our chapter in the textbook about bioinformatics, and today I want to tell you a little bit about different sequence formats. One of them is called FASTA, which is a format for entering DNA sequence information. And we'll also talk about using an online web-based program called BLAST, which exists in one place, at least, at the NCBI website. So I'm going to show you how to format DNA sequences in the FASTA format and how to use those sequences to perform BLAST. The FASTA format is a very easy format to learn. This is the structure of a FASTA format. It starts with this symbol, and then you enter the name of your sequence. And you can use any string of characters you want. So the name of the sequence has a line that starts with the less than character. And after the sequence name, you write the single letter nucleotide sequence code using A's, T's, G's, and C's. And that will be, I'm going to copy that sequence right now. And that will be the name of your sequence and the sequence itself. And then if you wanted to add more sequences, you can have a multi-FASTA sequence. If you hit return, add another character. This is the name of the second sequence. And then you have a different DNA sequence. So actually select both of those and we can go to the NCBI database and see how we'll use these DNA sequences to search for other DNA sequences that have already been found and put into the computational database. So to go to NCBI, I'm going to open a new web browser and go to ncbi.nlm.nih.gov Okay, so this is what you'll see when you arrive at the NCBI website. And the first thing we'll do is go to the Sequence Analysis button in the left-hand navigation panel. And then we want Tools here in the tab. And then we want Basic Local Alignment Search Tool, or BLAST. There are many different types of BLAST. What BLAST does, essentially, is use your input DNA sequence as a query. And it tries to find a match to the DNA sequence you provide the database. And we're going to want to do a nucleotide blast because we're using nucleotide sequences. So this is the main window that we'll be working in. This big window at the very top is where we'll paste our sequences in. So there's our two multi fast A sequences. One is called name of sequence, starts with A, C, T, G. And the second one, name of second seek, is its name, starts with T, G, C, G. So this has given us a job title 
called two sequences because it recognizes that we've entered two DNA sequences. Now in the database field, we we'll want to pick a specific database in this case. We want the reference genomic sequences or RefSeq genomic database. That is a database that's filled just with gene, whole genome sequences for many, many species. And if we scroll down, we find the button that says BLAST in the lower left. So we'll select that and let this query run. Now at this point, I'm going to show you another way to get to sequence information at the NCBI website. Let's search the nucleotide database. So if you select the databases here next to the search term, next to the search field, if you click in there and scroll down, we'll find the nucleotide database. And let's type in the name of a gene. And we've talked about at least one gene in class before, Huntington which is a protein that causes Huntington's disease. So we can scroll through this file and it looks like there's a messenger RNA sequence, this entry number one, Homo sapiens, human, Huntington messenger RNA. This is a 13,669 base pair messenger RNA. And what we can do is if we click on that FASTA button in its entry, that will take us to the FASTA sequence, so FASTA format sequence of the Huntington messenger RNA. There are two features to point out here. One is that you could double click and copy this entire DNA sequence, but if you wanted to use this DNA sequence to blast, what you would want is its accession number. And that's what's shown here. The NCBI reference sequence right there is its accession number. It's a unique alphanumerical code that's given to every database entry at NCBI. So we can copy it And then if we go back to BLAST, that's Sequence Analysis, Tools, BLAST, the fourth entry. We want a nucleotide blast, so we pick nucleotide again. Now here, you'll notice that in the query sequence field, it says you can enter a FASTA sequence, which is what we did earlier, or you can enter an accession number. So in this case, we paste in the accession number for the Huntington messenger RNA gene. We scroll down, and select Blast, the bottom left corner button. So now what Blast is doing is looking through all of the entire database of DNA sequences for DNA sequence entries that look very similar to, in the nucleotide sequence level, the human Huntington messenger RNA sequence. And while that Huntington BLAST job is running, we can look at the results of our original BLAST of those two nucleotide sequences. And 
And here is what a BLAST results page looks like. So first, at the top, we've got a drop-down menu where we can look at the results for each of our query sequences, that is, each of the FASTA sequences that we entered. So if I click on that, we'll see that we have our two query sequences. Name of sequence, which was 29 base pairs long, and then there was the second sequence I made up, name of second seek, which is 28 base pairs long. So right now we're looking at the results for the first DNA sequence, 29 base pairs. And here we see some important results. There are 114 matches of the sequence that I randomly generated and entered that I called name of sequence. And these colored lines down here represent a graphical representation of, for these 29 nucleotides that make up our query sequence, which part of those 29 nucleotides, with the key shown here, which part of those 29 nucleotides matched, each one of these horizontal lines represents a sequence that's in the database that matches, so for example, this black line matches probably from about nucleotide 2 about nucleotide 20 of our query sequence. And the colors of the lines represent the score or how well our query sequence matched a subject sequence, that is a sequence that's in the database. So usually you want to look for scores that are greater than 200, that means really, really high quality or good matches. Because we're using such a short search sequence, none of the scores are going to be very large. And if we scroll down a little bit farther, we have a table view of the same information, essentially, telling us, for example, the name of a species, Clupea herangus. This is genomic scaffold or genome sequence. It gives us the score, the query cover, that is, what percent of our query sequence matches. So 68% of our nucleotides that we randomly entered match the Clupea herangus genome. 100% identity. And if we scroll down even farther, we will see sequence alignments. That is, this is the main most useful view for BLAST results. So each of these sections of the alignments view represents one of those results. Here's our query sequence from nucleotide 4. So we start, it starts at nucleotide 1. But our match starts at the fourth nucleotide that I typed and goes until the 23rd. And so we have query sequence matching from position 4 to position 23, or nucleotide 4 to 23, matches the subject sequence, which is again the Clupia harangus genome sequence. From position 25,704, that's the position of that first G, to position 2,500. 25,723, sorry, which is the position in the genome sequence of that last T. And we can see that there's a 100% identity, that is, every nucleotide in our sequence matches exactly nucleotides in the Clupia herangus genome. However, note that this match doesn't start at query nucleotide 1. So we're missing nucleotides 1, 2, and 3. The first three nucleotides that I typed in aren't matching whatever the first three nucleotides here in the Clupia herangus genome would be. To take one more look, let's look at the Pongo abellii genome. Pongo is orangutans, if I'm not mistaken. Or is it chimpanzee? Uh-oh, I better go look it up. Here we see a similar result. From our sixth nucleotide through the 24th, there's a perfect match to a region of the Pongo abellii chromosome 5 sequence. Now all of this is important because in an upcoming Google exercise assignment, I'm going to ask you to blast a nucleotide sequence, and I want you to take 
a screenshot of this view of the blast results screen. And that is a screenshot that you'll be pasting or attaching to the Google assignment to turn it in. But this is the view I'd like you to be looking at when you take that screenshot is the top scoring alignments is the best alignments between your query sequence, the nucleotide sequence that you paste into BLAST, and what are the top scoring subjects or database entries that match your query sequence.